I'm going to help you avoid the mistakes that I made for years. I mean years when it comes to memorizing music. Spoiler alert, don't try to memorize a song by playing it a zillion times. That doesn't work very well. If you follow the strategies I'm getting ready to show you in this tutorial, it's going to make it so much easier to memorize music because it's going to take all of the mystery, or at least most of the mystery, out of what's going on in the music making it way easier to analyze and understand what's happening. If we're going to do a video on how to memorize music, then of course we need some music to memorize. So for this tutorial, we're going to use the song Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. This is a great song to have in your repertoire. I actually teach it in the early intermediate pathway of my sax school. I teach you how to make it really musical and sound great. And then later on in the improv section, I teach how to improvise over the song. But for this tutorial, I am gonna teach you how to memorize the melody to Isn't She Lovely. And the good news is that by the end of this video, you will most likely have the song memorized or at least be well on your way. Before we dive in, this is what the first four measures of Isn't She Lovely sounds like. Now, obviously, before you start memorizing a song, you have to play it enough times that you know what the melody sounds like. If you don't know what the melody sounds like, you're not going to be able to memorize it. So you're going to have to play the melody several times just to get under your fingers. When it comes to memorizing music, the very first thing you want to do is limit the amount of notes that you have to choose from. And the way you do that is by looking at your key signature and your tonal center. So your key signature and your tonal centers are going to tell you what scale the melody is going to be based on. Now, there are millions of songs and a lot of them, especially in the jazz world, will have multiple tonal centers. But for this example, we're going to pick one that has one tonal center. And all that means is that it is based off of a single scale. So if you look at the music for Isn't She Lovely, you can see that there are no sharps or flats and there are no accidentals in the song, so we are in the key of C. So when we're trying to memorize this song, we know that all of the notes are gonna be in the C scale. So C, D, E, F, G, A, and B are gonna be the notes that we have to choose from. So we haven't even started memorizing anything yet, and we already have limited the notes that we're gonna choose from, which is gonna make our lives a lot easier. Now, if you're playing pop songs, there's a really good chance that you're going to be in a single tonal center. You might have some accidentals here and there, but for the most part, it's going to be in one key. If you're playing a jazz song, it might pop all over the place. It might change here and change there, but you might have multiple tonal centers. But if you can find the scale or the tonal center that the melody is based on, it makes your life a whole lot easier. Now that we know the tonal center or the key of the song, which is C based on the C major scale, the next thing you want to do is organize how you're going to try to memorize the song. When it comes to memorizing the song, you're not going to start at the very beginning and go all the way to the end every time. You're going to break it down into phrases. And when it comes to phrases in the world of music, generally you're talking about two measures or four measures or two two measure phrases. So we're going to be learning this in two measure phrases because it'll make our lives a whole lot easier and it'll be like musical sentences. So if I told you to memorize the next phrase that I put up on the screen, which is memorize this phrase, you probably just looked at it and saw the three words and said memorize this phrase and you memorized it that way. You might break it down into three words, memorize this phrase, but you most certainly did not break it down into individual letters like M-E-M-O-R-I-Z-E. -E. And that's the same principle that you want to think about when it comes to memorizing music. You don't necessarily want to think about the individual notes. You want to think about how they go together, how they belong to each other. You want to think in musical sentences that will make your life a whole lot easier than trying to remember each individual note. Now that might sound a little difficult, but throughout this video, I'm gonna show you the process of how that works. So let's get started and memorize this first phrase. So this first phrase comes in with quarter note triplet pickups that come in on beat three. So it starts with a pickup. This is what it sounds like. 
So we're going to start off memorizing that phrase. Now, of course, the notes are E, F, E, D, C. However, if you're trying to memorize something, you don't really want to think about the note names. You don't want to try to memorize E, F, E, D, C because those note names don't really tell us how the notes are related to each other. The E just tells you what note it is and how you finger it on the saxophone and what it's going to sound like. It doesn't tell you how it's related to the F. So what we want to do is break these notes down into scale degrees. In other words, what number note each of the notes are in the scale. So we know this, uh, this tune is based on the C major scale. So we want to think about the scale degrees in the key of C. So for the scale degrees in the key of C, C would be one, D would be two, E would be three, F would be four, G would be five, and so on and so forth. If you think about it in scale degrees, it makes it way easier to memorize because you're, you're looking at how the notes are related to each other. And as an added bonus, as you memorize more songs, you're going to see that certain note groupings or patterns happen over and over and over and over. And when you think in scale degrees, it becomes really easy to see them. And it also will make it way easier to play by ear because you'll get really used to these patterns. Whereas if you're just doing it by note names, it makes it way harder to see the pattern. So the first thing you want to do is train your brain to think in scale degrees. In the beginning, you might even want to write the scale degrees above the notes. That might make your life a little bit easier. So instead of thinking E, F, E, D, C, I'm going to think three, four, three, two, one. So those are the notes in the C scale. The third note of the C scale obviously is E. The fourth note is F. The third note again is the E. The second note is a D and the first note is the C. So again, I'm going to think three, four, three, two, one. Now, when you think in scale degrees, it gets a lot easier because you can think in scale movement or direction. So instead of thinking about all five notes, I will just think this starts on the third, it goes up one note and then down the scale to the root. So it starts on the third, goes up a note, and then down the scale to the root. So all I'm thinking about now is where it starts and where it ends and the direction of the notes in the scale. So instead of thinking three, four, three, two, one, or E, F, E, D, C, I'm thinking about the first note, which is the third, the direction of the notes, it goes up one and then down, and then that makes it way easier to remember because I don't have as much information that I need to store in my brain when it comes to memorizing this phrase. Now there is one other thing about scale degrees that is really important and will make your life way easier. And that is that all scale degrees are not equally important. Your chord tones, which are the one, three, and five, are the most important notes. And if you know that your chord tones are more important, it's going to make it way easier to memorize things because oftentimes your first note of a phrase or your last note of a phrase is going to start or end on the chord tones. Also, if you're playing some scale wise motion and then you jump, a lot of times you're going to jump to a chord tone. So if you know your chord tones, uh, it's going to make it way easier to memorize what you're playing because oftentimes you're going to be jumping to chord tones. So it's going to make it easier to remember. Now, if we look at this first phrase, it starts on a three and it ends on a one. It starts on a chord tone and it ends on a chord tone. So again, organizing the way the notes are grouped together is going to make them way easier to memorize. All right, let's take a look at this second phrase, which starts with pickup notes again. This time it is on the third beat of the second measure. Take a listen to it. Sounds pretty familiar, right? In music, you have a lot of repetition. If you recognize that repetition, it makes it easier to memorize things. So we are repeating the same phrase, but this time, instead of ending on the one, we add two notes, the six and the five, which are the A and the G. So again, we're ending on a chord tone, which is the fifth. So we start on the third, we go up one note, down the scale, skip the seventh, end on the fifth. So again, instead of thinking about individual note names, I'm thinking about the scale degrees, how they're related together, and the movement of the notes, whether they're going up and down or skipping around at all. All right, take a listen to these first four measures.
We just memorized the first four measures, and if you look at the next four measures, you can see that it is the exact same thing. In music, there is a lot of repetition, so that makes our lives a whole lot easier. Take a listen from the beginning to through the first eight measures. Now, let's take a look at the pickups going into measure four. Again, we start on the three, but this time, instead of going three, four, three, we keep going up. So we go three, four, five, five. And then guess what? It repeats again. We go three, four, five, four. So those two phrases, they're a question and answer phrase. The first one plays the five two times. The second one plays the five one time and goes back down to the four. Again, thinking in scale degrees and the direction of the notes makes life so much easier. From there, we start on the three again, but this time we repeat it three times. And then we have a little descending pattern which goes 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, one, and ends on the 6. So this middle section is probably going to take a little bit more work than the beginning because it's not so repetitive. So this is going to be a section that you probably have to break down in the two-bar phrases and play through several times to get it under your fingers. But again, you want to think in scale degrees, the direction of the notes, and how they're all related. That's going to make it easier to memorize it. So you're going to want to break down this middle section just to get it under your fingers a little bit better because there is not quite as much repetition. For the next phrase going into measure 13, we have the pickups on beat three again. And this is very similar to the, the second phrase that we were talking about going into measure three, except instead of having a rhythm and pickup notes at the end of it, it just has half notes. But you start with the standard three, four, three, and then you work your way down, two, one, six, five. And if you listen to the second measure with the pickups going into measure three. So it's the same notes, just a different uh, rhythm with the longer notes at the end. Think about the scale degrees, find the pattern, think about the repetition, even if the repetition is a little different each time you play it. Let's take a look at these last two measures. There are a lot more notes and a lot more going on, but when we break it down, it's actually gonna be pretty easy to figure out. Take a listen. So it starts with that stinger note on beat one, the C. Then we play a triplet lick. Now, when you look at this triplet lick, I might be like, oh wow, there's a lot of notes and I gotta figure out these notes and remember all these scale degrees and uh, it's gonna take a lot of work. I'm never gonna be able to remember it, but again, if you can find the pattern, it makes it a lot easier. This lick is just a pentatonic scale starting on the five. So the pentatonic scale is very important for melodies and especially horn lines. And the pentatonic scale, the major pentatonic scale is one, two, three, five, six. <laughs> uh, so this lick is made up of all those notes and they're in order. So it starts on the five. So it goes five, six, one, two, three, five, six, one. So if you know your pentatonic scale, this lick is actually really easy. You're just playing an ascending pentatonic scale. So because it's an ascending pentatonic scale, you don't even need to think about the individual notes. All you need to do is think about where it starts, which is the five, and where it ends, which is the one, and then you're going to play all of the notes in between. If this is one of the first songs that you're trying to memorize, the pentatonic scale part at the end might be a little more difficult, but I promise you, the more songs you learn, the more the pentatonic scale is gonna pop up. It's all over the place in melodies, 
and horn lines. So it's gonna be one of those things that just you get under your fingers and you recognize it right away and you'll be able to play it without even thinking about it as you work on the pentatonic scale and memorizing songs more. If you wanna dive deeper into the pentatonic scale, I do have a course in my sax school, the Scott Paddock Sax School, called Pentatonic Licks and Patterns. In that course, I teach you 10 pentatonic licks and patterns. I break them down. I show you how to personalize them. Uh, we play them in every key. By the end of that course, you will know your pentatonic scales, both the major and minor ones, inside and out, upside and down. You'll be crushing your pentatonic scales. So if you want a little more pentatonic madness in your life, check out the pentatonic licks and patterns course in my sax school. As we analyze this song to make it easier to memorize, notice that we did it in small sections. I, I didn't start at the beginning and play all the way to the end, and start at the beginning and play all the way to the end. I did it in small sections. That's the way you wanna work on memorizing anything. You wanna do it in smaller sections, smaller phrases that you can then group together. If you try to do the whole thing at once, it's gonna be a lot more difficult and take a lot longer. So break it down into small digestible size bites. Now here is one big major added bonus to memorizing songs by scale degree. And that is that you will probably be able to play it in different keys fairly easily because you're thinking about the way the notes go together by scale degree instead of note name. So that will make it a whole lot easier to transpose it into a different key. So if you just memorized Isn't She Lovely in the key of C, try doing it in the key of G by thinking about your scale degrees. For example, we start off with three, four, three, two, one, and the key of G, that would be B, C, B, A, G, because B is your three, C is your four, B is your three, A is your two, and G is your one. So when you think about melodies and songs and licks and scale degrees, it makes it really easy to transpose into different keys, and it's really great for learning how to play things by ear. So if you want a little extra added bonus, once you get this song down in the key of C, go ahead and try and play it in the key of G as well. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School where I have courses dedicated to just about anything you wanna learn on the saxophone.